Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. Today we're walking into the water from the shoreline because not everybody has a boat. So here are a bunch of helpful tips for shore diving. Make sure that you can get out of the water before you get in. Before you even put your suit on, check the shoreline for as many exit points as possible and check their conditions, the water movement and all that, so that you know quite a few different ways that you can exit, not just one. That and, of course, water movements. You don't have a boat with a nice big engine on it to come and collect you if you're struggling, so it's really down to your legs to get you out of the water. Look for currents, water movement, and anything that you need to be aware of before you get in the water. Tell as many people as possible where you're going diving and at what time and to call them back when you actually get back because you're going to tell those people to call emergency services if they don't receive your phone call. If you get caught out in a current or something happens to you, you want the alarm to be raised as early as possible and an exact location for an effective search party. Map out your dive plan and list all of the applicable phone numbers of who to call in that case of emergency and then give it to someone who's not on the dive with you with a certain time to raise an alarm if they can't contact you or if you haven't or if they haven't received a phone call from you. Take your time. Shore diving usually takes place on sandy or rocky shorelines where the shifting substrate can very easily turn your ankle or cause you to just fall over. You've got a lot more heavy equipment than you're used to walking around with day to day and with your center of gravity it's going to be slightly different, a lot higher to normal so Take your time when you're walking around and make sure that each step is planted properly before you then shift your weight because it's very easy to fall over and it's quite embarrassing. Inflate your BCD and try to sit down when you're entering the water. That initial wade into the water before you put your fins on is quite boring and laborious and you'll be able to float in surprisingly little water. At that point where your bum doesn't touch the floor, you can actually put your fins on and then paddle backwards much, much easier than trying to wade through waist high water. Triple check your weight belt or your weight pouches. Forgetting your weights on a dive boat is annoying, but it's just social suicide on a shore dive. You all wade out into the waves, you get your fins on, you swim out to the descent point, you deflate your BCD all together, and you're the only one stuck on the surface bobbing around, and you then have to swim all the way back, wade all the way back through that waist high water, back to shoreline, whilst everybody is sat there on the surface just waiting for you. So triple check that you are wearing all of your lead and you're ready to actually descend before you get into the water. It's worth swimming a little bit further to a better exit point. A really rubbish exit point with like large rocks that you have to clamber over, crashing waves, surging water is just that, it's rubbish. Even in an emergency, it's far better to swim a little bit further, a longer distance if it means an easier exit. Something with a nice calm slope or better access for emergency vehicles because the surface swim is the actual easy bit. Once you lose the benefit of buoyancy, it just sucks. Use SMBs as much as possible. Boat traffic won't know that you're there underwater and a few little bubbles coming up when you exhale, they don't stand out very much on the surface, but a bright red surface marker boy will stand out and help you from being hit by some random guy on a jet ski or a boat. If it's gonna be a shallow dive or local requirements require it, use an SMB from the very start of the dive and just continuously. Otherwise, when you're starting to shallow up at the end of the dive, just send up a DSMB so that everybody knows exactly where you are in the water. Use the surge properly, both on entry and exit. Surge will push and pull you, so get a feel for that timing and use it to your advantage. When it feels like water movement is going to push you backwards, then 
anchor yourself down as much as possible so that you don't lose ground. When it eases up, then start to make your move and just wading in shallow water, try and check over your shoulder so that you're not going to be blindsided by a random rogue wave behind you. Changing mats will save your life or the life of your feet. Keep your feet religiously clean and keep your changing mat clean as well. Kitting up, put your mat down and make sure there's no grit or sand on it. When you're putting your boots on, then give them a good tap and a brush so that you make sure that everything is out of inside of your boots. Wipe your feet as well as any small piece of sand will just rub and that sore will not heal properly if you keep it getting it wet. Dry bags are your friend. After the dive, hang your gear up to drip dry as best you can, but it can take hours for all of your gear to drip dry completely. So you're gonna need to store your equipment in the back of your car whilst it's still a little bit wet. Most cars, they have that absorbent toweling material carpet on the inside that's just gonna take forever to dry and it's gonna cause your windows to fog up for the next few weeks because the air inside of your car is saturated. So stow your suit and any wet gear like your gloves and your hoods inside of a dry bag or a gearbox to contain it so it's not leaching out into your car because your car's just gonna stink. And that's it for now. Uh, if you have any helpful tips for other divers, then by all means, let them know down in the comments below. And of course, head over to simplyscuba.com for the latest scuba diving equipment and check out our Instagram for when new gear is announced. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.